Tell me about the men of Pa'a. Uh, so men of Pa'a. Basically, um, reintegrating uh, men that's coming from the justice system back into our community. Uh, job training, skill training, clean and sober living. When we rehabilitate the kane, is we make sure that the kane is first and foremost. The kane gotta get well. When the kane get better with himself, his family gets better. When the family gets better, uh, who benefits from that is the community and that's why we can be so strong in our community to be of service in our community and all the work that we do. Uh, Tucker, honorary member um, of Kue. And to share with you, um, I'm with this group because we get things done in our community and we have people who are, are changing their lives and beginning new and I want to be a part of that. The Hawaii Sheep and Goat Association is a um, agricultural nonprofit and for this, in the state of Hawaii and we assist and aid and support um, producers of sheep and goat um, for local use. We recently put together a cookbook and which is what kind of inspired the emu plan. Suddenly everything went to video. I'm Chef Ellard. Uh, I'm here I'll be filming, so if you see me put a camera in your face, that's why I'm doing it. Eating local became a lot more important, resourcing, working together, and the indigenous information, which is priceless. I'd already worked with um, Dr. Kamehameha on the, the emu section that she did, her whole emu section in the back. So I did emu with families on Oahu, um, Hilo, Maui, Ho'olawe, ask people what they use, what they cook, um, what kind of firewood, what kind of hali'i. Yopa Manukea is the executive director of the Men of Pa'a and he's also the Kahu Imu. Running an Imu is the same thing as running a ship. You got a captain and the captain is the one that you listen to. It creates order out of chaos if you see all of the moving parts going on. Uh, we're here to do one job eh, gang, and that's to get the Imu done. Teach our kikis, teach our kids, teach each other, teach each other, right? But you gotta, okay, but you put your finger in a puka. Yeah, puka, okay then. Yeah. And get different ideas from different people. And I also, I also go in on the fact that I try something different too, rather than make on circular emo, I will make on square emo today. Yeah. And the important thing about emo or any cultural practice is innovation and adaptation to times. Mm -hmm. Now it's only because I like try to see if I can control the fire more, put more food in more at a square area because everything that we're gonna put in is mostly square. We can do more circular emo, not a problem with that, but I just gonna get a little bit fancy. <laughs> Do what I like to. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ian. Uh, but like I'm with the Manapa. I was just emphasizing how you know we were able to learn the emu um, to um, Iopa's dad that was taught to him. So we were able to learn the legacy that was passed on from Iopa to us. And I've been doing this for a couple a couple times already. And you know it helps me with identifying with my culture and where I came from. And it just reminds me where I come from. And I am Hawaiian. And like come from this land, so. So, emo is just the Hawaiian word for underground ovens. Um, there's other words in other languages. Uh, in Fiji, it's lovo. In New Zealand, it's hangi. In um, New England, you would call it a clam bake. Uh, in uh, First Nations areas, sometimes we call it a pit cook. So it's really a common way of cooking, but in Hawaii we call it an emu. If you look in the Hawaiian dictionary, emu means different things. So besides just um, this emu, there's also um, emu for healing people. It's really just a great way, um, like we're seeing right now, some people are learning for the first time how to make emu, um, how to pass on ways of cooking food 
and uh, also how to share food and spend time with family. My name is Zephani Achman. Have you done emus before? No, this is my first time. So what you have here is like uh, multiple steps of rites of passage going on. What do you think of it? It is pretty fun. I'm helping other people make the emu. Yeah. It's, I like to help people a lot. The first thing we're going to do is um, dig a square hole over there. I get, them, I get them marked out. Maybe a more rectangular one, I guess. Maybe about 18 inches deep. The material when we dig them out, I, I like them on the on the high side, and I just like them around the whole area like that. You know, the material. Why? Because if rain, the hill coming down, the rain going come. At least we won't block the water from going into the emu. Every move we making, get one reason and one rhyme to them. After after this piece, after we dig them, we get um. A bunch of magazines uh, that we're gonna rip up and tear them up and throw them inside to help start the fire. Then I get the kindling. We're gonna drop that in first, and then and then from there gonna be the 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 next size up to the the Calvary wood until we get the thing full. Oh, thank you. That's so when we light the flame, the thing can go right down in the middle. Huh? When you come out with one of his old shirts, <laughs> like how he do them. Put all of the heavier wood in the middle because in the middle is where it usually burn first. Yeah. When it, you don't put the heavy wood on the outside because by the time it gets outside, it takes a long time to burn. Okay. So it makes sense you put all the heavier wood in the middle. Some more right there. There you go. Put the small ones on the edge. Yeah. Fill in right there. And you got a nice, flat, evenly heated uh, emu. Yeah. Rather than you have just the middle hot. And then, emu rock. Big ones first, all the way around. Build them about two feet high. All the small rocks going all fill the pukas all inside. I like the wood exposed like this, so the rocks start them over here, this way, okay? Cap. Double <laughs> <laughs> got to pass <laughs> 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 what's called takeaways so I like, I like do that now I like I introduce that now so that we can hear from everybody else and then after that we pretty much done for the day and then I think we come back uh, somewhere around one o'clock tomorrow so when the food come we can start prepping the food takeaway today well I'm uh, sorry I really never do nothing but crumple pepper <laughs> <laughs> but all the kids here and everybody's hands helping each other that's awesome. I'm really excited to taste the food. Blessed to have everybody involved. And uh, thank you for letting me be a part of it. Hey. Um, it's always good to be here with everyone. We have a lot of laughs and we eat a lot, which I like the most. <laughs> and it's good to see new people come help us out and it's good to meet them. But to see everyone work together and to just pass those rocks and to pass the cave wood it's it's just i mean it's proof that the many hands make light work and it's 
what we need more of is the truth. How's it everybody? So um come with me real quick. Um so this operation right here basically is making the holly e out of the banana uh, stumps. We strip them down and then this intent is to put it on the emu so that it kind of helps um kick down the heat. That's the whole intention behind the holly e process. Obviously there's local our local banana plants and we get to um use whatever we got on the land to help us with our emu and if you look uh more here there's more of them right there to um to use as a halii a blanket i always call it a blanket to cover the rocks with it we're using the banana leaves to cover the food so that we can um put the burlap bags on top and then coming to the emu you know we've got the we've got the emu set up and ready to go so in the next couple minutes We'll start burning it. So yesterday when we went build this emu, we went yeah. build them with paper on the bottom. Yeah. We went put kindling on the top of that. Then we went put thicker kindling until we got the logs of Kiawe wood. Yeah. Yeah. The intent is to make sure that the bottom burn uh, with the kindling. It starts the next uh, kindling of wood. We had heavy rain last night. Rain probably got inside a little bit. It's going to be challenged a little, but we'll, 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 we'll uh, deal with the challenges when we when we get this right now i can smell the paper i can smell the wood so i know yeah. that the wood stay burning some of the kindling it's just a matter of now it's just a matter of catching on now people might have to sacrifice another shirt maybe i doubt it i hope not i think we got them i think we got them. how much more you get water from that My name is uh, Israel Keolana Balgis. Have you done an emu before? Yes, I have. Do you like doing it or? Yeah, I actually, I actually love doing it. Well, besides the fact that, you know, um, great food comes out of it when we do it, you yeah. know, um, just being able to collaborate and just hang out with all these older men and women, you know, it, it's just really fun. You know, I get to, I get to learn something from them each and every time I come. So right now we're seeing that the rock is is being burnt down the wood is burning um and what's happening now is that it's doing what it's supposed to do it's heating up the rocks and the more the longer the wood burn because we put a lot of wood in here 
the more hotter the rock's going to get. Yeah. And how you can tell when the rock's getting hot is that you see how it's black on the rocks? Mm -hmm. Right now, those black rocks is like hot right now. And eventually it's gonna turn red like the like like the like the wood. So it's gonna be an awesome scene when we're done with this. Nice. So the rocks are called pohaku in in, a... in Hawaii. And what you want with these rocks too is that you you want um rocks that got a lot of pukas in it. Okay. Um, it just holds the heat more. If you got more smooth rocks in it, yeah. you burn it. It's gonna blow up. It's gonna crack back, crack, crackle, and pop. Because right? the water gets trapped inside. That's those. probably, I don't know the science of it, I but think, that's just our experience. I think it is the smooth, the water moisture gets mm -hmm. inside and then it heats the moisture. Oh, that, that makes sense. Yeah, it's yeah. just our experience. Like we yeah. put smooth rocks, it blows up and it, it pops. You know, like this one right here. Like you want a lot of rock like that. That one right there. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. So, you know, that, that's the kind of rocks you want to put in there. I see. Yeah. And sometimes, it's not the idea to use the big rocks. Yes, big rocks is good. But what you want really is you want a, 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 an evenly spread heated emu. It's trial and error, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> trial and error. And there's, uh, no, there's no one perfect No, way to no, emu. man. There never have been. People yeah. shouldn't have to worry about trying yeah. new things. Yeah, right. uh, you know, the, the only thing that you really got to be cautious or probably um, you have to be aware of is is how long you put your food in, how much food you get versus the the fire you have. Yep. Everyone has an emu that doesn't cook. Yeah. I have had an emu that uh, did not cook. He's doing the same thing as here. I was doing it for the forest service instead yeah. and they didn't tell me how much food they were bringing and so we didn't have enough fire. So when we opened it up, I was like, as soon as we got there in the morning, I knew it wasn't cooked. Oh. I knew it wasn't cooked. What do you do then when it's not cooked? <laughs> ovens, guy, ovens. Oh, ovens. The importance of what's happening now is if we kind of look closely is that the way we would set up the wood we set it up evenly so that it'll burn evenly. You try to look around all at the edges all of the edges is burning right now. Yeah. You look at the edges here and if you go right around on the other end too all the way you can see just go right around there you're gonna see all of the edges burning. You want that to happen so that now our fire can be evenly distributed. Yeah. Yeah. That means we're maximizing the whole space of the emu. Right. This is at least four by four, maybe five by five emu that we made, square emu. Okay. So the intent was to maximize the area on top. What kind of wood are you using today in the emu? To oh, okay, so we had a chance to go up to Kohala with our partners up there, One Heart Hub, and go harvest um, Kelvi wood. It's not just about what you're seeing on this video with the emu, it's like all of that prep that went up, like who gathered that banana stump, who grew the banana stump, mm -hmm. where did that kiave come from, mm -hmm. how did that relationship form so that Yopo could get that kiave. Mm -hmm. We know that kiave wood burns much more hotter and longer versus the ohia that we use here in Hilo, uh, very wet, long burning, and it takes a long time for it gets really hot. So you can use all kinds of wood though, right? Well, you can use all kinds of different woods. I mean, look, you know, the folks on the mainland, they got oak and all kinds of different kinds of woods they use, right? Yeah. But they also have mesquite too, yeah. in a certain places too. What so. about guava? Strawberry guava? guava yeah. uh, I, I use the guava too, but guava again, it's greener. Yeah. It's way more thicker, it takes longer to burn. Yeah. Um, in this case, the kiawe wood, it, it just yeah. does what we need it to do, yeah. which is to uh, burn fast and heat up the rocks. What were they eating? What are they eating? Lamb. All grass, meat, All grass, grass right? and uh, brush. Huh. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Strictly grass fed, and they're a different breed yeah. than hers. Yeah. Suffix by Hampshire. Mine are darker. Okay. So over here we get Kahlo, um, 
that came from these guys and their mom. Right here is some pork butt, ham, some more pork butt, turkey. Oh, yes. Nice. Yes. Yeah. So I believe we had like four, four lambs, five lambs. We had like one whole pig, about a 180 pound pig. We had, um, six pork butts as well. Um, we had two turkeys, we had two hams, and then we had a mess of vegetables, potatoes, kalo, uh, carrots, onions, a whole bunch of potatoes, uh, sweet potato and all. When we pull the potatoes, that's I'm the taste tester for the potatoes. So I'm for thinking sure. you're a vegetarian. I'm a vegetarian, but I support um, local meat being used for people that decide to include that in their nutrition. What we like to do is, when, when the emu burn down, we let the emu kind of kind of stay flat after when it burns down. So this is the rocks right here. When the thing burned down, this is the hole. We let all, we let all of this drop down and we let them kind of flat along the emu line. And we're probably going to make them flat too. We're going to have to make them flat. So and after that, we're going to put the, what's called the hali'i, the banana stumps, that's going to be shredded. Right? The banana stumps all on top, the rocks. And we're gonna leave them like about a foot off the side too. Okay? So that, why? So that our bags don't burn when we put the bags down. Make sure the ends get plenty too, yeah? I don't like burn the bags. Yeah, so that the thing stays tough. Ready? Hold on. You need some more time. Oh, yeah. You need yeah. some more time. Yeah. 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 Okay. There you go, bro. Food. Okay, bring the, the pans. The okay. pork pots you first. Let's pork pot first. Pork pot. So see if we can put two like that and then on top. It's not this ham. Put right on top. Yep. I like one out of pork pot to yeah, Pork pot. Right there. Right there. You've been doing emos with your family before, and uh, yeah, I've been from from at a young age. I'm from like about five years old. My, you know, I used to help my grandfather them with the emo and stuff like that, you know. And then as I got older, um, makes sure, you know my grandfather started relying on the teenagers and the older kids to do the emo, you know. And but he would still manage from the outside, and he he also kind of remind me of my grandfather, you know, um, with the cleansiness of the food and stuff like that, because food is important. Food can get rotten real quick you know yeah so you know with him keeping you know, everything it kind of got brought flashbacks from my grandfather you know and stuff he used to be the one to get yelled at you know kind of, tony boy what you doing <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you know and you always, you always keeps me on my toes you know and but he does it with aloha you he said, does right? it with aloha yes so you don't feel like bad about it it's no i don't feel bad about it it's just it, i know everything is it means good you know and it's just for um, our safety and stuff you know yeah okay what are vegetables oh, Wait, what is this? Turkey, turkey. 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 It's all good. It's already in my shirt. Hold it. 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 Hold
But when we're ready, just pass me the um the bralette bags I get them because I only get so much and I like use them wisely. So you learn from your dad how oh, to do emu, right? My dad, <clears throat> my dad was the best. <laughs> my dad was born and raised in Waipio Valley. Uh, his name is Alexander Poliahu Auna. He was the worker amongst workers. Uh, sent all his siblings to college that got all degrees and got um, um, good jobs and everything. Then my dad decided to venture out on his own. Left his whole thing. He went do do his thing, and then um, just kept those traditions alive. This is one of them. <laughs> this is on family tradition. Okay. Put the umbrella bags on top. On top the emu. Moving right around it. So much bags this way. So wet burlap sacks. Yep. Oh no, that's just a cat. Keep coming right around with me. No, no step on them, man. Next thing, the perlic bags. Then we're gonna cover them with plastic, and this is how we're gonna cover them with the plastic. The plastic gonna be like this on top of the emo, like that, so we can put the dirt right around on top of the plastic to we'll hold the plastic down so no more steam come out. Okay, so the intent to this emo is make sure that we, we keep the steam inside the plastic okay uh every plenty of guys they get a lot of ways different ways of doing them plenty of guys bury the whole thing i just decided to go with the plastic because it's easier faster less work for us to just taking the easier softer route to this uh and get many many different ways to do them as 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 you guys know <laughs> No, no dig the plastic. Why are we shooting down water? Why? Because, because I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> to pack the dirt more, yeah. You, you know, and that's why, that's why culturally rooted, we we help reconnect the men through our cultural practices so that it, it stirs some ohana values and <clears throat> ohana legacy. Yeah. Uh, the interesting part about that is that a lot of our guys come in disconnected from our culture, disconnected from family, and it's because of the way of life today doesn't allow us to practice this. Being Hawaiian is a conduit or an opportunity to let us share our family traditions with other people. I think we got to bring us back to the land. We got to come back. We got to continue to grow our potato, grow our cow. Food security and food sovereignty is like the, the, the thing that we all must be doing at this time, especially in this uh, uncertain, you know, times of uncertainty. Yeah? We must move on and we must be resilient. And this is the way that we, 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 we be resilient by cooking our own food, knowing where our food comes from, and respecting the food. Yeah, so. Cool. Yeah. But we also must practice the cultural aspect as well. We gotta practice the, 
the cultural pieces that was passed on to us because if we don't pass them on then we're not doing our job our kupuna went pass them on to us now our turn to pass them on to the next generation okay. Okay. The emu in cooldown planning from last night. We know that the emu was in all night. Okay, so we know that the the food probably gonna come out mild temperature, not gonna be as hot as we normally usually do. Perfect. Uh, this one, take down. Yeah, I, you know, I've seen different emus. I've been with different families. The number one question I get is, is is my emu right? Yeah. And the answer I always give is. Is your food cooked? Yeah. Right. And if they answer yes, then I'm like, yes, you're definitely doing your emu correct. That's good, yeah. One pole. Mm -hmm. One feet, guys. Okay. Okay. Okay, wait there. Yeah. Okay. One, two, Nine. three up. Out that way to you. Out, all the way out. One pole. Ooh, that was good. Yeah. I think Okay, one more sheep. Yeah. Only one more sheep. Yeah, one more. Once again, we're handling food, eh? Be very courteous to food. Yeah. Yeah. I got this over here. I'm gonna make something on our side that that's gonna help us. That was good, Chef, huh? Yeah, pretty good, huh? That's all good, man. So you were never scared that it wasn't yeah. gonna come out? Nah, it always does, man. <laughs> it always does. It's just legacy. Let me ask. Yeah, that's good. Oh, God, my arm. Tongue. <laughs> First time with the sheep, so I will see. I know they plenty bones, can see them already, but it's all good. What do you, what do you think of the sheep? How did it come out? It smells delicious. Oh my god, it looks beautiful. Oh, skin. Skin? I have maybe. Um, your mom's taking pictures. So all the food that we made in the emu, where's that gonna go? Well basically we have we've got a, a great amount of people who've helped assisted us beyond what has happened today and we're going to uh, give them some as a mahalo gift. Uh, we also have a few families in the neighborhood coming up and that we're gonna share with the, them and, and then we're going to tomorrow go to the farmers market and give try to share some of our delicious lamb with people who have never had Kalua lamb which I know a lot of people have not this lamb, right? right a lot of people have have had negative feelings about lamb tasting lamb more when they were it was older which was called actually mutton and the lamb that we have here today they're young lamb it tastes good it's sweet and um, I think we're gonna change a lot of minds this time about how lamb tastes to people
It just came out of the emu. Alright. But you've had clue of pig playing, right? Yeah. What do you think? Wow, that's actually really good. Yeah. Yeah, it tastes really good, man. That's that's actually I think it's way better than Kalua pig itself, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's pretty good. Yeah. Mm. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Right, it's the whole thing. Good. Which is the sheep? It smells like good. Oh. Ate it. That's good. Good. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what is that? Like Kalua pig. A lot of body. Mellow. Yeah, mellow, mild taste, very kiave y. Yeah, yeah. It just looks so different. I've never seen the potato cooked like all the way through in this way, like the color and everything. It's just so interesting. I'm super excited. Okay. Oh my God. It's good. <laughs> wow. I can taste the smoke flavor in it. I can almost taste like a hint of the meat just you the essence you probably can yeah, yeah the <laughs> essence of the meat and the smoke flavor inside the potato and the potato is cooked perfect it's so soft it's almost a mashed potato but still together oh my gosh i'm so lucky <laughs> nice potato Kahlo. oh Kahlo. oh Kahlo. okay oh, wow. so yeah, you, you're the vegetarian on camera food trier i am the vegetarian okay, so, here yeah okay so this is this is taro or Kahlo. Kahlo. And that's gonna be wow. That's good, yeah. It's so different than any any way I've ever tasted it before. Yeah. Definitely still has the smoke flavor, less of the um, meat essence. Like yeah, yeah. the I don't think the kalo like um, is uh, dense enough to allow it to like you know it's kind of thick. It's much thicker. Yeah. Um, but they're both so 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 good. This is amazing. Nice. Do you feel like this was a success? Oh yes, <laughs> oh, we we covered we covered some ground in yeah. this project. Yeah. First of all, cooperation, cultural aspects, environmental pieces, youth, organization, collaboration. And the food oh. came out good too, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> that's the that's yeah. the number one test. The that's food the was one. cooked. Yeah. And everyone's working really well together and. Everyone's super happy, and I think that that's like a good indicator of how people will feel when they eat the food. They'll be happy and they'll think of good thoughts. Yeah, I don't know why I'm thinking of a patele right now, but patele's are really common Still nowadays. <laughs> I know. The SRT's not bad. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. How's the food? Oh, oh no, oh no. Amazing. <laughs> I'm in awe because, again, we are using the Aina as it's meant to be to nourish us. Thank you. you want some butter on it? Yeah. Yeah, man. Universal values of family, of mutual aid, connecting to our communities through food and building relationships through food. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chili pepper water. Good stuff. That's the stuff, man. That's the only thing you need on there, right? I think people sometimes see emu as like this Hawaiian thing, but it's all around the world and it's something that we can all take emu with us and um, the experiences as well as if we go away, we can make those exchanges. So it's even like a bridge building between different cultures. The vegetarians, finally the vegetarian gets gets to enjoy. So our emo now, um, basically now it's about the cleanup time, all the food went out. This gonna burn down, once this burns down, and then we take out the emo rocks, we put the emo rocks where belong over there. And next thing you know, we just bury this thing and we get ready for our next emu. So like the emu pit stays in the same place? Same and... place, same time, same bat channel. <laughs> <laughs> Shaka to your mara, fara, uncle, sister, brada, cuz. Shoots Lolo. It is. <laughs> oh, 
My grandmother always says, Ehoomaama'a na mea Hawaii. That means the practice of our Hawaiian culture. But it's not only a Kanaka thing, it's a worldly thing. And we need to make sure that we pass that on. And like you said earlier about the aina, that's very important. Because again, aina can live without us, but we cannot live without aina. We need aina. In fact, today, we need aina more than ever. Our friends are growing the sheep and the goats. Our friends are growing the vegetables. And our friends are all cooking it. It's all one circle. And that's what we want here. This place was an open area of fruit trees all over. Still get the fruit trees. And I remember my dad had all kinds of stuff planted over here. That is why you're feeling the mana that you feel over here. My dad stay around here someplace doing his thing. And it, and it, um, I can feel them coming out in my brother and I. And I hope that, um, I hope that we can pass that on to, to others. That'd be the fastest way, so. Oh, yeah. I'd like to talk more about this later. Yeah? Ke aku 